You are the worst daughter-in-law for not coming to your husband's surgery. That's enough. My mother-in-law called me early in the morning and started shouting at me as soon as I picked up the phone. What are you talking about? I don't have a husband or in-laws. What are you saying, Rhea? You are Robert's wife, aren't you? Have you finally realized how unsuitable you are as a wife? My mother-in-law sighed and said to me as I remained silent. Well, never mind. If you want to be recognized as a daughter-in-law, come to the hospital right now. After hearing the name of the hospital that my mother-in-law mentioned, I calmly told her. Mother-in-law, haven't you heard from Robert? Robert and I are already divorced. What? Divorced? After hearing everything, my mother-in-law changed her tone and begged me not to come to the hospital. My name is Rhea. After graduating from a local university, I decided to work for a major company in New York and started living alone. Life in the city and my first job were both daunting, but I was filled with more expectations and motivation than anxiety. I would summarize the work I learned from my seniors in my notebook on the same day and check what I should do the next day. My serious work style was appreciated by both my seniors and bosses, and by the time I had been with the company for a year, I gradually began to be entrusted with various tasks. Then, when junior colleagues joined the company, I became a senior and naturally became more involved in educating my juniors, wanting to return the favor I had received from my seniors. One of those juniors was Robert. Robert had graduated from a top university's master's program and was already a respected figure when he joined the company. And I, who was full of motivation at the time, was appointed as Robert's mentor. The smart Robert immediately understood what I said and learned more and more about the job. It was an exciting experience for me to convey my own experience to Robert and see it applied to the job. Robert's well-targeted questions became an opportunity for me to grow as well, and we started going out for drinks together after work, not just during work. I soon realized that spending time with Robert was more enjoyable than anything else, and Robert felt the same way. Hey, are you two dating? A common senior who saw us going out for drinks every day and getting along well asked us that. No, it's not like that. But I want to date Rhea. It seems so. What about you? I also want to date Robert, but... Thus, Robert and I started dating with the company's approval, and two years later, we got married with blessings from both inside and outside the company. Robert, I feel fulfilled with my current job and above all, I enjoy it. Even after we get married, I want to continue working. Of course. I fell in love with Rhea, who is lively and passionate about her work. I'll help with the housework from now on. Robert respected my feelings and agreed to a dual-income lifestyle. However, Robert's mother did not approve of our life. During my first New Year's visit home after getting married, my mother-in-law came at me like a ton of bricks. Rhea, when are you going to quit your job? Well, as I've said before, I find my work fulfilling, so I plan to continue working for the time being. You've been married for a year already. You should have children soon and leave your job to Robert. You should focus on being a good wife. But Robert and I have talked about this. Robert is just being nice to you. It's ridiculous to make your husband do housework. No matter how much I tried to explain, she wouldn't listen. Robert stepped in to help. Wait a minute, mom. Rhea and I have talked about this. Even if you say that, Rhea will just get carried away. I'm happy with our life right now. If there's anything wrong, we'll talk to you about it. Well, if Robert says so. With Robert's words, my mother-in-law reluctantly backed down. I thanked Robert quietly. Thank you, Robert. No, I'm sorry for making you feel bad. If my mother says anything, tell me right away. I was a little worried about my mother-in-law, but thanks to Robert's kindness, I was able to enjoy my newlywed life both publicly and privately. A few months later, I was offered a promotion. I told Robert first. Robert. Listen. I'm going to be promoted this April. Promoted to manager? Yes. My boss recognized my hard work. I see. I thought he would be happy with me, but Robert's face darkened. Robert? 
Whose credit is that? What? You're good at your job because I help with the housework, right? Isn't it strange that Rhea is promoted before me? You're getting in the way of my promotion. Robert, what are you talking about? Robert suddenly blamed me with an incomprehensible theory. The kind Robert the first knew until then seemed like a lie. Wait. Robert, you agreed that I could balance work and family, didn't you? Balance? Robert frowned at my words. Housework is only possible because I help. Can you really say that you're balancing work and family? You're not qualified as a wife. That's not true. Robert added insult to injury. If you can't do housework properly, why don't you quit your job and focus on your family? I don't want to quit my job. My boss recognized my hard work. I'll work harder at home too. I decided to take on all the housework without relying on Robert, hoping he would approve of me. But Robert didn't help me at all. He even started complaining about the housework he never commented on before. Did you just grill meat for dinner today? Huh? It's sautéed pork, so I seasoned it. Isn't this a shortcut? You only make simple things because you're working, right? Oh, no. Robert started coming home late, saying he was going to drinking parties, and we began to drift apart. Robert, why don't we eat dinner together once in a while? We haven't talked much lately either. No matter how much I tried to reach out to him, Robert wouldn't listen. What? I don't want to eat your lazy meals anymore. It seems that even at work, he complains about how I'm cutting corners with housework. That's not all. It seems that Robert has been complaining to my mother-in-law about me, and her attitude towards me has gotten even worse. Rhea, you said you would do the housework yourself, but it seems like you haven't been cooking at all lately. That's because Robert hasn't been coming home. Excuses are unbecoming. Robert isn't coming home because you're not doing your housework. As a wife, you should create a home that your husband wants to come back to. I'm sorry. Anyway, Robert, who graduated from a top university, and Rhea, who graduated from an unknown local university, were never a good match from the beginning. And yet, you're so cheeky as to want to work together without even being grateful for getting married. Even if I wanted to talk to Robert about it, he had started coming home in the morning, not just late at night. Robert, are there really that many company drinking parties? Who are you drinking with all the time? Even when I asked Robert, who came home in the morning, he just dodged the question. You don't need to know that. Even couples need privacy. I felt something suspicious about Robert's words and actions, but he didn't try to talk to me anymore and immediately locked himself in his room. The next day, I was convinced that my intuition was right. On my way home, I realized I had forgotten something at work and was on my way back when I encountered Robert walking arm in arm with a strange woman. I immediately sent Robert a message. Robert, are you still at work? I have something important to tell you, can you come home? Then, Robert replied, I can't come home because of work. Robert was clearly lying. Has he been pretending to work and meeting women like this all along? I confronted Robert, who came home in the morning. Robert, welcome home. Robert was surprised when he saw me waiting for him in the dark room. What? Don't turn on the lights. I told you I had something important to tell you. Can't you wait until tomorrow? I'm tired from work. Work? Is meeting women part of your job? I showed Robert the secretly taken photo. Robert's face changed quickly, but he immediately said. This is your fault too. If you were a better wife, I wouldn't have been wandering around with other women like this. What? That doesn't mean you can cheat. When I calmly told him that, Robert frowned and closed his mouth. I was getting angrier and angrier at Robert, who would stay silent when things got inconvenient. I'm doing most of the housework, and I'm doing my duty as a wife. So what's the problem? When I raised my voice, Robert muttered. It's because you're acting all high and mighty after your promotion. What? I'm angry because you act so high and mighty after being promoted. You can't even do your job that well. The only reason you were promoted is because your boss likes you. 
don't get carried away. With Robert's words, I finally understood why Robert's attitude had changed so much. Robert was just upset that I had been promoted before him. If that's the case, he should have worked harder himself. All Robert did was hold me back. I felt my respect for Robert disappearing more and more from within me. Without realizing that my feelings were cooling off, Robert justified himself. You said you were doing most of the housework, but everything you do is subpar. Subpar. The house is dirty, and the food is terrible. Try putting yourself in my shoes, living in such an unpleasant environment. The reason I cheated was because you're an unqualified wife who can't do her job properly. Robert's triumphant smile made me angrier than ever. I understand. If that's the case, let's just get a divorce. Ignoring Robert, who was taken aback by my sudden change, I quickly packed my things and left the house. The next day, I signed the divorce papers and sent them to my home. Then, I rented a new room and started living alone. A few months later, I was suddenly awakened by a phone call from my mother-in-law early one morning. As soon as I answered the phone, my mother-in-law began to shout. You're the worst wife for not coming to your husband's surgery. Cut it out. What? What are you talking about? I don't have a husband or in-laws. What are you talking about, Aria? You're Robert's wife, aren't you? Have you finally realized how unsuitable you are as a wife? My silence made my mother-in-law sigh. Well, never mind. If you want to be recognized as a wife, come to the hospital right now. Apparently, Robert had been taken to the hospital after hitting a guardrail while driving on his day off. When I heard the name of the hospital my mother-in-law told me, I calmly told her. Mother-in-law, haven't you heard from Robert? Robert and I are already divorced. What? Divorced? Yes. We got divorced because of Robert's infidelity. Infidelity. My mother-in-law screamed in disbelief. Without paying attention to my mother-in-law, I continued. Moreover, he blamed me for his infidelity and said he wasn't at fault. Robert isn't at fault. That's right. That must be it. My mother-in-law muttered to herself as if she had understood everything. Robert would never cheat on his own. If he did, it's your fault for being a bad wife. I was amazed that my mother-in-law was saying the same thing as Robert. I repeated the same words to her. Even so, infidelity cannot be justified, can it? My mother-in-law suddenly fell silent. I gave up on questioning my mother-in-law and finally told her. Oh, by the way, mother-in-law. Thank you for calling me today. What? Why so sudden? I was worried about where to send the reminder letter because Robert had moved out of the apartment. Reminder letter? When we divorced, I claimed compensation, but the payment is currently overdue. Compensation. When she heard the word compensation, my mother-in-law suddenly became flustered. Before my mother-in-law could say anything, I continued. I thought it was inappropriate to involve you in our marital affairs, so I was hesitant to send it to you. But thanks to you, I know where Robert is now. I'll go and deliver it right away. Then, my mother-in-law stopped me in a hurry. Wait a minute. Robert just had surgery yesterday. Don't do anything that will hurt his wound. But even if you say that. If I miss this opportunity, Robert might run away again, right? Wait. We have to pay for the surgery now. We can't afford to pay compensation. He doesn't have much savings, so I have to pay for the surgery. I wonder if he used the savings for the affair. That's their own fault, and it's not a reason to stop claiming compensation. My mother-in-law entreats me as I remain silent. Then tell me the name and address of the affair partner. Robert will surely leave you and be with her. I would ask her for some money. Oh, I think that's an impossible request. Why? The affair partner also had a husband. Moreover, even though the affair was discovered, they didn't get divorced. They've already paid the compensation in full, so they probably don't want to have anything to do with Robert anymore, right? My goodness. 
my mother-in-law realizes that there's nothing she can do and lets out a despairing voice. Ignoring her, I calmly tell her. I'll come over there now. You said, come right away, mother-in-law. Wait. Please. Ignoring my mother-in-law's voice, I hung up the phone. I went to the hospital my mother-in-law told me about and handed the reminder letter to Robert, who was exhausted after the surgery. Robert entreated me with a pathetic voice. Rhea. I've been a mess since we broke up. I need you after all. Can't you forget the past and start over? My mother-in-law follows Robert in a hurry. That's right. Rhea, you can work as much as you want from now on. If you want to support Robert, who can't work due to hospitalization, now is the time, right? I am disgusted with the selfishness of the two until the end, and I tell them impersonally. I came here to hand over the reminder letter. If you keep making ridiculous remarks and refuse to pay compensation, I'll take you to court. After telling them that, I left the hospital room without waiting for their response. The word court seemed to have an effect, and my mother-in-law immediately transferred the compensation to me. However, because a colleague from the company who happened to visit the hospital heard the whole story, the story that Robert was paying compensation because he cheated and divorced had spread throughout the company. Robert's reputation as a cheater had spread throughout the company, and he had become the center of attention. Robert, who couldn't stand the contemptuous looks around him, resigned from the company. Robert moved out of his new place and returned to his parents' home. He tried to get a new job, but he chose only companies with higher salaries than mine, so he couldn't find a job for a long time and couldn't even pay back the money to my mother-in-law. I heard that Robert, who needed money immediately, was earning food expenses by working as a day laborer. On the other hand, I was freed from Robert and my mother-in-law and was able to devote myself to work even more. I was promoted again, and I felt more and more fulfilled in my work. For myself, who has been working hard steadily, and for my boss who promoted me and my senior who taught me my job carefully, I swear to face my work sincerely from now on.